this episode of our program Daily Debate. Today we'll be shedding light on the uh, 28th uh, edition uh, of the um, ordinary summit of the African uh, Union, which is taking place in Addis Ababa. And um, this year's summit is held under the theme Honsing Demographic Dividend Through Investing in Youths. During the opening session of the summit, President Fatah Sisi signed the African uh, Agreement to Counter Corruption. But prior to the summit, there was an, um, a closed door session in which the President attended. And uh, the president asserted Egypt's support to an expanded African economy, in addition to establishing a continental free trade area. The president said that the summit of the three economic grouping that was held in Sharm el-Sheikh in uh, 2015, that gathered together the ECOWAS, the Kumas and the SADC, uh, launched a trilateral free trade zone to be the core of a continental free trade area. Sisi also pointed to the great benefit of the economic chances in Africa through increasing investments and upgrading inter-African bilateral trade links. The uh, presidential cabinet spoke the presidential spokesman, Ambassador Ali Youssef, said that the closed session also tackled efforts to establish a continental free trade area. They also reviewed during the session Rwanda's President Paul Kagame's report on the African Union institutional reform. In this issue, President Sisi referred to the necessity of adopting an integrated perspective to the institutional reform process in a bit to reach a comprehensive reform to increase the AU affection or effects uh, worldwide. Also, during uh, uh, this uh, conference or during this session of, uh, of the summit, and according to uh, the presidency statements, President Sisi uh, would be uh, also uh, holding a number of uh, meetings this uh, meeting started today with a meeting with the Ethiopian Prime Minister and uh, yesterday there was an important meeting with uh, the presidents of Kenya and Congo Brazzaville. Also um, on the top of the summit's uh, agenda was this um, request of Morocco to uh, return to the African Union after more than three decades uh, absence from uh, the body. Um, president Sisi also held talks with uh, the Zambian uh, president and congratulated him on his re-election as the new president. Today, the African Union already uh, approved the uh, uh, Morocco's, uh, the Moroccan request, or rather, readmitted Morocco to join the bloc once again. We'll be discussing today the um, agenda of this summit, the challenges that are facing the African uh, continent at large, how uh, could or what would be a strategic and integral uh, plan for the continent that would gather all the African countries together for the sake of the African nations. Before we proceed on with our uh, discussion, let's first have a quick look on this report and then we'll come back. President Abdel Fattah Sisi is participating in the two-day 28th African Union AU summit, which began on Monday in the Ethiopian capital Addis Ababa, under the theme "Enhancing Demographic Dividend Through Investments in Youth." A presidency statement said that the President Sisi participated in a closed session of African leaders in which he asserted Egypt's full support for African economic integration. During the opening session of the summit, the President has signed the African Agreement to counter corruption. According to the presidency statement, President Sisi's signature indicated Egypt's interest to achieve uh, tangible progress in uh, combating corruption. On the sidelines of the summit, President Sisi met Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas to discuss the Palestinian-Israeli peace process. Uh, 
The president also held a meeting with Ethiopian Prime Minister Hali Maryam Dizlagan, who has warmly received the president at the opening session of the summit. The president also met a Kenyan president, where presidential cabinet spokesman Ala Youssef said that both presidents referred to the historic and fraternal relations between Egypt and Kenya, adding that the Sisi asserted that Egypt is seeking cooperation and development with all African countries. Moreover, President Sisi noted that during the meeting that terrorism is considered one of the large challenges facing the African continent. For his part, the Kenyan president praised Egypt's role in supporting the Kenyan people's struggle to achieve independence in the 1960s. Kenyatta also welcomed the CC upcoming visit to Kenya, which will focus on the implementation of cooperation agreements and the fostering of bilateral relations. Earlier on Sunday, President Sisi also met his Congolese counterpart on ways of fostering commercial and economic bilateral relations. The the meeting also touched on efforts to settle the Libyan crisis in the meeting held recently by the Senior African Committee in Congo. According to the presidency's statement, the Congolese president praised Egypt's role in reaching a political settlement for the Libyan crisis. The Sisi in turn asserted Egypt's refusal to meddle in the internal affairs of the Libyan state. The president called for a rapid resolution of the Libyan crisis in order to maintain the unity of the Libyan state by ending all disputes between different Libyan factions. Welcome back, and uh, let me welcome our guests, uh, Dr. Mohammed Abdel Ghaffar, Chairman of the African Economic Council, and Dr. Ibrahim Al Ghazay, Professor of International Law uh, and uh, Political Lands. Thank you both, gentlemen, for being with us. Thank, Thank you so much. If we start with the theme of this year's summit, and it's enhancing, uh, enhancing demographic dividend through invested, investing in youth. Mm -hmm. And how far does this theme go with the outstanding um, problems facing the continent at large at those days, please. Um, well, let, let me start with the, um, uh, grabbing the attention to the very important issues about uh, recent history of Africa uh, with a lot of conflicts indeed, whether internal or between uh, neighboring countries. Mm where the youth generations have been, uh, of course, targeted. And uh, let, let us say also one of the sad facts about uh, conflicts in Africa, that uh, the, the, uh, the, the child soldier is a phenomenon only in Africa, most of the yeah. times, with more than uh, 5,000 children are, are recruited uh, as, as soldiers in, in the ongoing fights whether internally or mm. between some of the neighboring countries. So now if we talk about the, the 28th summit with this theme on, on the eyes of the leaders of Africa, it looks like that they have reached this logic and uh, humanitarian uh, mm. uh, conclusion that should have been uh, uh, given um, um, priority uh, probably 10 or 15 years ago. Mm. Um, I think that um, the, the tempo of or the pace of uh, development in Africa in recent years 
is higher than it was probably 10 years ago, which is one of the good signs. Uh, probably still missing um, how to utilize the resources of the African countries. Including in, youth. Including, yeah, of course, yes, of course. Definitely. And that is so relevant to the uh, topics uh, of the agenda or what is stopping the agenda of talks. Uh, a top of them is terrorism. Terrorism and the ongoing conflicts in the continent. And this is why I started with the theme of uh, yeah. the summit itself. If you look at the challenge of terrorism and the conflicts that are really uh, reflecting on the uh, continent's ability for development, how do you view that? Actually, uh, terrorism and the conflicts in uh, the African countries, um, it is uh, one of the major uh, reasons which keep the young men uh, trying to escape away from the African continent mm. and from the African countries. That's why uh, the leaders of the African countries, they uh, been studying a formula for exchanging data and tracking the terrorist uh, organizations and militias uh, between the African countries and uh, this is uh, uh, one of the most important topics they studying it on this uh, summit. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, the president of the uh, Libyan uh, Republic uh, uh, initiated the, to establish a, a, a troops or uh, African army to uh, follow the uh, tourists in the African continent, either in Libya and itself or other countries like uh, uh, Nigeria to uh, uh, have a confrontation Mali, with Somalia. Uh, Boko Haram, Mali, Somalia, even in uh, Kenya after those uh, uh, terrible uh, uh, incidents happened in Gestuit and the different uh, points in Kenya. Also, one of the important topics is the summit studying the enforcement of the uh, democratic uh, automation between the African countries and how to uh, give the opportunity for young men to participate in the uh, uh, political uh, process and uh, to be candidate in, uh, in the parliaments and even in presidential uh, election and how to uh, help them to know their rights, uh, their political rights, their constitutional rights. Uh, the other uh, topic which also uh, important uh, that uh, deploying uh, President Paul Kagame to uh, put like uh, an image to uh, develop the uh, hierarchy of the African Union and how to uh, re-posting uh, uh, re, uh, the uh, uh, duty and missions uh, it's supposed to achieve for the African continent. We know today uh, we had an election for the African uh, uh, Union, unity, uh, new chairman. The, uh, African Union. We have the new chairman of the African Union as President uh, Alpha Condi, the president of uh, uh, Equatorial Guinea and the chairman of the uh, African Commission. He uh, uh, the ex-minister of foreign affairs for Chad uh, Republic. He is uh, Minister Mohammed uh, Moussa Fiki. Yes. Uh, the one who's really expert in the uh, uh, African African relationship and the Afro Arab relationship. Yes, and that's good news. And uh, yes, that's a good opportunity to congratulate, of course, the new chairman of the African Union, uh, the Chad's Foreign Minister Musa Fiqi or Mohammed Musa Fiqi, uh, of course. Uh, for uh, the post, hopefully, we'll see uh, a kind of Afro-Arab new uh, strategy for both uh, regions' uh, interests. If we get back to the uh, topics on the agenda and um, several and contentious issues, like we spoke about conflicts mm -hmm. uh, in the continent. Um, conflicts in the continent have... Um, a different shape and different uh, 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 
Yes, and, 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 and different, they are so different than the mm -hmm. Arabs, for an instant, for the uh, other uh, Middle East countries. The African conflicts, and how do you view them? How do you view the tools that play in those conflicts in fueling further the situation? I, I do believe that um, a stronger uh, African Union uh, will be very much supportive to put an end to most of this, uh, the, the remnants of the conflicts in Africa. Uh, still, we have problems in Somalia, and we have problems in South Sudan, uh, in, in Darfur relatively, in some in the Western Sahara and Maghreb al Arabi. Area. Well, we have a big, we big have problem a big in problem Libya. problem in Libya, yeah. of course, yes. on top of it. Uh, in, in northern Tshad, uh, uh, it's part of the the, the um, unstable history of Africa. Uh, unfortunately, this sort of um, racial um, or sectarial uh, uh, conflicts, and uh, pr probably it's it's more or less internal today in, mm. in, in most of the countries that still suffer from such conflicts. But still, the idea is. Um, most of these conflicts um, have been using to the, the, the worst uh, possible extent the natural resources of their countries. And of course has led to a lot of dramatic uh, uh, living conditions to most of these countries. And most of those illegal immigrants, African illegal immigrants, coming from the countries where these conflicts are taking place. Uh, that takes the attention or should take or should take the attention of uh, of the African Union today uh, and the instrumental countries to uh, try to uh, um, play more focal more uh, 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 let us say uh, influential role into bringing peace into these unstable communities uh, we cannot talk about uh, economic boom, we cannot talk about stability or security um, as long as we still, in these countries, uh, succumb to the sectorial clashes oh. and, sect and, and racial issues. Oh. Um, uh, unfortunately, um, uh, I believe that only Africa today, some particular countries in Africa, still uh, probably the only countries in the world today, uh, still suffering from these issues. Of course, there are some other small parts like in Myanmar and other, but it's very minor in, in comparison to, to Africa situation. I believe that uh, the leaders today should, uh, should um, uh, bring to the attention of, the, of all the African countries, the, all the leaders, the, the president, and, and, and they have to understand and they have to collaborate together. A lot of things can be resolved if African countries cooperate together, mm. if they open, uh, open up the gates for uh, um, sincere and serious and continuous and sustainable cooperation. Um, we talk, of, for, for instance, if we take Somalia, you know, there's been years and years today, and Somalia is problematic to not only to Somalese people, but to the whole region and, and, yeah. and, 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 and this part of the, and this very important part of the world. Um, I do believe today that the African Union is committed, should be committed, to find uh, an instrument, a tool, influential one, and well supported by all the African countries to try to intervene, find solutions, uh, bring uh, good lessons to these countries, this countries in trouble, uh, try to cut long stories short about the suffering of instability in most of these countries. Uh, instead of leaving them to uh, just um, go the way they used to go. Mm. Um, I have been to uh, uh, most of the African countries on yes. different occasions, and I know that all the African countries are very rich, a lot of potentials, but most of these potentials, they are not used. Mm. It's just um, uh, they are left uh, you know, unused and, and uh, inhabited uh, uh, and the resources that used even uh, uh, if they uh, manage to use some resources they use it probably in, in killing each other in these problems uh, uh, and as raw material yeah. that are being exported outside exactly. when we need to re uh, or to manufacture them here mm -hmm. in our continent exactly. Exactly. yes but we'll speak about that when we speak mm -hmm. about uh, the economic situation but let me 
before going to the economic situation here, there are three important uh, other uh, topics on the agenda. Uh, the readmission of Morocco that uh, yeah. today the African leaders have agreed on uh, and that of course is a uh, good and, and remarkable. For this topic we have to mention for the Egyptian rule for uh, mediating to convince most of the members to uh, accept the uh, readmission of Morocco also even uh, uh, Mauritania uh, but some conditions for for that uh, one of them to keep the uh, uh, Sahara Republic uh, chair and the African Union as it is. Uh, also to, to withdraw the Morocco troops from a certain region in the Sahara Republic, although that uh, through, uh, but that was uh, not, by the way, uh, uh, through a mediation from uh, yes. some countries like Egypt and some mm -hmm. other countries, we managed now to uh, uh, get Morocco member back after 33 years. But yes, I have to to about this because we cannot, of course, speak about Morocco and not mention yeah. yesterday's match yeah. <laughs> <laughs> between Egypt and Morocco. Yes. Uh, Egyptian uh, defeated uh, Morocco, but I have to say that the Moroccan team was well, very good. Yeah, more yeah. than excellent indeed. So I guess anyway, if Egypt... Uh, Actually, we are very grateful for them to give us, to give the Egyptian people that opportunity to get happy and to... Uh, yes, get definitely. <laughs> definitely, we were time. happy yeah. very much <laughs> yesterday. And I have to congratulate our brave um, players and good luck for the rest, I hope. <laughs> and getting back to what we were speaking about, yes, Morocco was one issue. Another uh, uh, three important issues uh, is today the anti-corruption uh, agreement yeah. that they signed together. There is the process of reforming the African Union in order to be more effective, yeah. not just uh, in uh, the continent, but rather as a world body. Yeah. Uh, there is also a third topic, which is a free trade uh, area, and I guess this would fulfill the aspiration of all the African nations. Um, these are three important issues on uh, the uh, agenda of the talks. One, uh, one also of the <clears throat> most important issues, uh, three countries uh, or three ministers of foreign affairs for 30 countries uh, they have had a meeting yesterday and they announced they are going to withdraw from the ICC, from the International Criminal Court. And this to be the way for the rest of the uh, members of the African Union to withdraw or to announce their withdrawal at any time uh, convenient to them. But they said the reason behind that the five permanent members in the uh, International Security Council and the UN, none of them are uh, agreed for, uh, the Rome, for Rome the uh, convention. Uh, convention or Rome protocol. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. It, uh, well, the ICC in itself <laughs> <laughs> needs to have an emphasis yeah, to speak exactly. about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. But yes, uh, definitely three countries uh, uh, have asked for that <coughs> and that is uh, 30, 30 countries 30, 30, 30 countries African countries yes. Mm -hmm. yes I guess the whole African continent because I guess the ICC was really uh, established only for five Africa. countries out of uh, 54 countries is still attached to the ICC one of them is Burkina Faso playing today <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yes anyway um, that would be a topic for discussion in itself, the ICC and Africa. Um, but returning back before we proceed on with uh, our discussion, let me uh, take another uh, report of uh, the day. And uh, in uh, 2004, an AU uh, uh, advanced human rights by establishing uh, the African Court on Human and People's Rights. Um, the aim of mobilizing the support of the African countries to the Palestinian people and the international forums and a meeting today uh, the president held 
on the sidelines of the African uh, Union. Let's watch this report and we'll come back for discussion. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas warned today that achieving a lasting and just peace based on a two-state solution was at risk. Addressing the 28th summit of the African Union, Abbas said that Israel does whatever possible to abstract the creation of an independent Palestinian state with East Jerusalem as its capital through its occupation and settlement construction, which is leading to the one-state situation with an apartheid system imposed on the Palestinian people. Abbas said that any change in the status quo in Jerusalem and the Palestinian territories occupied in 1967 may undermine chances of peace and stability in the region. This came as the UN Secretary General has condemned African countries for opening the borders to refugees and people fleeing violence, while other parts of the world, including the developed West, closed boundaries and built walls. Antonio Guterres' remarks came as he had addressed the African leaders who are attending the summit of the African Union. Guterres, who is attending the summit for the first time as head of the UN, said that African nations are among the world's largest and most generous hosts of refugees, adding that African borders remain open for those in need of protection when so many borders are being closed, even in the most developed countries in the world. At the beginning of the summit, the Guinean president has been elected the new chairperson of the African Union. He takes over from the Chadian president, who till today was a EU leader. The chairperson of the African Union is the seminal head of the Union. It is elected by the Assembly of Heads of State for one year term. It rotates among the continent's five regions North, Central, East, West, and Southern African regions. The incumbent will, in this capacity, chair the summits and represent the continent in various international fora, such as Tokyo International Conference on African Development, the Forum on China African Cooperation, the group of eight G8 and G20 summits. Right, welcome back. And um, as we said, uh, or as this report showed in today, uh, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas addressed the African Union as an observer, of course, and for Africa's role in the Palestinian issue, particularly in the world body, the United Nations. Um, from this perspective, how do you view the African-Arab relations and how do you view Egypt's ro role in, in, in this particular area? Um, well, I, I think that um, the, the, uh, the visit of uh, Mr. Mahmoud Abbas to, to attend as an observer in this uh, summit uh, was really important. And actually, it's not the first time he used to do that. Um, and we have to remember always uh, with great gratefulness the, uh, the, uh, the usual support of most of the African countries to the Palestinian cause. Uh, today, uh, Palestinian cause in, in much more need to the support of the African Union yes. more than ever, indeed, because that what happens today in, in, in occupied land uh, is uh, unprecedented in terms of the uh, illegal expansion of uh, establishing uh, uh, settlements for the uh, the uh, Israelis in in the occupied land trying to um, imprint the Palestinian land with the Israeli uh, stamps. Uh, this is uh, relentless trials from the Israeli occupation yeah. forces there. Uh, of course, Africa has a big role to play, not only in Africa itself, but also in the international arena, in the international uh, fields. Uh, on top of it, the um, uh, United Nations Security Council and General Assembly. Um, w w th there must be sort of uh, international pressure uh, always and, and even more um, uh, uh, stronger than ever on Israel today. It looks like, um, you know, because of the Middle East problems that most of the uh, African countries today uh, probably are, uh, are not so much engaged in, in the Palestinian issue because the, the, the Arab countries themselves are, are, are now uh, more or less more occupied into their own problems in, 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 the, in Syria, in Iraq, in Yemen, in Libya. 
Uh, so uh, the Palestinian cause is not today in the Arab world and the Arab life today is not as it was 10 years or 20 years ago. And 10 years ago it was on top of the priorities of the Arab countries. Today we have four big Arab countries that today are suffering from internal uh, civil war and problems. And, uh, you know, the, the priorities have, have shifted in the negative side for the Palestinian cause. That's why I see the presence of Mahmoud Abbas today in the African Union uh, events as really a strong and good uh, um, move towards keeping the Palestinian cause on top of the agenda and the facade of uh, priorities for the African countries as I said, not only for African issues, but also for the whole international relations, especially the UN and the Security Council and General Assembly, and uh, also to uh, keep the Palestinian uh, uh, pains, uh, uh, illegal treatments and human treatments in, in, inside the oh. occupied land, to keep it always in, on, on top of the events in Africa. So um, we have to remember also that in the last 20 or 30 years, Israel uh, presence in Africa has taken on a stronger uh, uh, existence, uh, whether economic or else. Exactly, and, and, and that is exactly what really uh, caught the attention here. Mm -hmm. I mean, here, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas addressing the African Union, mm -hmm. while it is very well known fact that Israel, Israel. Exactly. Uh, exists and exists strongly mm -hmm in uh, some of the African uh, continents. Well, that's, that's a message also, not only mm. from, from uh, Mahmoud Abbas as uh, head of the Palestinian Authority, mm. but should be also from Egypt or all other Arab countries, mm. should be also very careful about that and, and, and pay more attention to these issues. Yes. Dr. Abdel Ghaffar, yes. The, you know, uh, on the history and the struggle uh, history against uh, the colonialism, there used to be merging between the apartheid, the African apartheid uh, case in uh, southern African countries and also the Palestinian case. Uh, we got the support from all the uh, members of the African unity by that time, the Organization of African Unity, and they described the uh, Israeli existence in uh, Palestine as a, a colonialism and uh, uh, it is practicing a sort of mm. apartheid from the Hebrew uh, culture and from the uh, Jew bloodline against the uh, Arab Muslim bloodline. And uh, we used to achieve a lot of progressive because of the uh, support of the African countries up to uh, the end of the African apartheid case ended by uh, uh, electing uh, uh, late yes, President Mandela. Mandela as a president for the uh, Africa, South African uh, Republic. Uh, but uh, the membership for Palestine as uh, observer member in the African Union, it, uh, it is... Uh, uh, for, more than, yes. for more than 25 years. Yes, okay. definitely. And but we, we cannot don't also... forget, we don't forget mm. that the African uh, uh, members, the African countries in the African Union, they refused completely even to receive uh, the uh, uh, president of the, or the prime minister of the uh, Israeli uh, to even to step in the African Union. They refused that and they refused to admit his membership as observer member. And you know, not only uh, Israel who's looking for to get observer membership, also yes, Turkey yes. looking for getting, uh, uh, seeking for that opportunity and they refused that, the African countries, they refused that. Uh, some other country like Iran also uh, seeking for getting observer membership and even it get condemned to receive such requests from countries far away, not even uh, close like uh, Arab countries, but they are uh, really far from our region. Yes. Um, issues from peace and security of the continent to youth and the role and of course, um, 
many uh, 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 the economic file in itself if we also speak about some of the important sidelines meetings president Sisi held uh, a top of them was an important meeting with Ethiopian Prime Minister Haile Mariam Dezelenia and of course the Kenyan president I guess those one took place today and the other took place yesterday yeah. yes how do you view those sidelines and the talks that went? Um, it's um, um, it's sort of inevitable to have this sort, of, this warm relations with the uh, not not uh, only the basin, the Nile basin countries, mm. uh, with Ethiopia and Kenya on top, but all the African countries. But when we talk specifically about Ethiopia and, and we, our concerns about. Uh, the Renaissance uh, Dam that is being uh, built today. Um, uh, it has been uh, uh, said before several times that uh, uh, although Egypt is, uh, is seeking uh, uh, good solutions and, and sustainable uh, solution to the issue with Ethiopia, uh, the president just probably two days ago announced in Aswan that the, the, the Nile water uh, in Egypt is a matter of life and, and, and death. So um, they, they should understand that. I think they understand that. And only, all, only through peaceful talks and, and friendly relations with the, uh, Ethiopia, uh, these things should be uh, uh, handled. I do believe that they are, uh, the, the, such meetings will um, uh, um, probably um, open uh, gates for, for more fruitful talks and, and also more cooperation in, in the future. Today, the dam is, is a fact. Mm. And uh, um, uh, the, the, the more, um, uh, let us say, challenging issue is how to run it, how to, how to uh, use it, uh, the time of uh, filling the dam, uh, how to control the, uh, uh, technically and uh, materially uh, all the, the elements of, of making it functioning in, in the proper way. So Egypt has to be part of this, and Sudan, of course, it's mutual concern, not only for Egypt, but also for Sudan. And I think this talks is, uh, is so important, and the Ethiopian side is fully understanding that, you know, it's, uh, it's not a matter of uh, uh, internal issue for Ethiopia, mm. it's, uh, it's a territorial issues with a country like Egypt and Sudan, more or less totally depending on the water sources, mostly coming from the Ethiopian side. Of course, it, uh, Kenya is still also one of the basin, Nile Basin uh, uh, countries uh, member, and we have very good relations with Kenya. And still, the the, the need is always uh, existing there that we need to reinforce and deepen our relations with the, these countries, Nile Basin countries. Uh, it, it should be taking sort of uh, uh, full integration into each other economically. We have. A lot of things we didn't do together. We have to be more uh, effective in terms of mutual cooperation economically. Uh, most of the, uh, the products of these countries uh, we can rely on, and our products also, they can have it. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, the, so far, the, the, the amount of mutual trade between Egypt and these countries is very much less than what it should be. Mm. should be reflecting that we have one destiny indeed, whether Ethiopia, Kenya, uh, Sudan, all, all the countries on the line of Nile Basin. Um, uh, that will be for the interest, not only for, in, in, for Egypt, but for all these countries. All yes. these countries are in real need to Egypt, and we also are in real need for them. I hope that the, the, the politics of handling these issues in the future will reflect this sort of interdependency between mm. us. Yes. Egypt has uh, played um, a pivotal role in the African or within the African continent, many issues. And um, I guess that it has always been trying to play that role, not just for the interest of the continent, because we are keen on that, but also because it is the uh, national uh, and strategic uh, um, security uh, of Egypt. If we speak about the Egyptian rule and we speak also about uh, what we've been speaking, uh, the election of two women to important yeah. uh, roles, they are going to be elected to in the African Union. 
let me ask you about the role you view Egypt. Uh, okay. Uh, let me say that Egypt used uh, to be a leading country for the African uh, continent. It used to host all the liberation movements and the uh, African father, fathers for the African continent, like uh, Sekitori, like uh, Jomo Kenyatta, Jean Calais. Uh, uh, of course, when Nasser came in uh, July Revolution, uh, it also uh, legalized that struggle. Uh, and uh, we managed to give support, different kind of support for that liberation movements, either by relief materials or even by sometime weapon. But the most important support we used to offer for the uh, liberation movements and the political offs here that we used to deduct from our time. Uh, in the UN Security Council, in the uh, UN uh, uh, Assembly, to uh, present uh, the African struggle to all the nation, to all the world. And also, uh, after uh, the new Egyptian <coughs> government, the President El Sisi came with that uh, huge agenda of development for uh, several projects here in Egypt. We found one of them is to open a direct dialogue with the Egyptian youth. We found the same thing on uh, uh, on the top of the agenda of the summit, okay, how to invest in the youth. Also the other thing, how to promote the uh, uh, level of education <coughs> for the uh, uh, on the Egyptian uh, uh, as a country for the Egyptian society. Also, you found the same thing on the African uh, summit. So I believe uh, now Egypt became the compass for uh, the African Union to uh, take this as a success pattern for the African uh, countries. Uh, where one of the things uh, invited the African countries to try to get uh, e a benefit of the Egyptian experiment in the education, especially in the application and the technical education. Uh, what, what, uh, what we have done in uh, promoting that sector of education, either with cooperation with some mm -hmm. European countries or uh, advanced countries in the world, like Germany, uh, that's why they, they would like to get the same uh, experiment to the African countries. And a lot of treaties uh, have been done either between the Minister of uh, Education here and the Minister of Education in different African countries. Yeah. Also, uh, we have a good news for women that we have two candidates from Egyptian experts. Uh, she, uh, one of them is uh, Dr. Amani uh, Abu Zaid, she uh, used to be uh, in the African Dev, the African Development Bank. Uh, she is going to uh, be as a consultant for the uh, uh, commission, for the chairman of the African Commission. Uh, the new one is uh, Minister uh, Mohammed Musa uh, Fiki. And the other one is Dr. Mona El Gaf. She is also going to be a commission. She is competing to become a, a commission for uh, a trading and uh, development in the uh, African Union. Yes. Now, if we, if we get to the trade yeah. um, uh, and economy of Africa, and uh, we have seen in 2015 the tri uh, trilateral summit that took place between the AEC, the uh, Comerce, and the SADC. And um, we have seen the participation of 26, 27 countries mm -hmm. from of those three blocks together here, starting the uh, what we uh, call the tripartite free trade uh, area or the TAFTA. And this is is being seen as as the 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 base or the foundation for an overall free trade area in the continent. How mm -hmm. do you view um, this uh, uh, agreement? How, how do you view um, 
um, the ability of the continent to initiate such uh, a trade agreement at large? Well, if we talk about the, uh, the abilities, yes, abilities are there and there are plenty indeed. Uh, Africa is a very rich continent. Um, it, under such an agreement, uh, um, I, I do hope that the, uh, the practical steps to, to make this agreement reality uh, will be uh, expedited by uh, the internal uh, uh, legislation bodies yeah. in, in all the African countries. In, in, it has to go a long way of procedures. Uh, but uh, hopefully that, that, that will end up creating for us as Africans uh, that sort of European Union in, in our continent in Africa. We really need this. Um, and, and a lot of facilities uh, and a lot of positive feedback will, will, will benefit all the African communities from such an agreement to take place in, in the ground. Uh, not, not only about the economic, we, we talk about the youth for, for instance, uh, that will create hopes for the generations to stay in their countries instead of uh, going illegally, trying to reach the other oh, side oh. Of, of the, uh, uh, the, the world to Europe side or the paradise. Yes, we hope uh, to go down, yeah, not up. The, exactly, exactly. Why going and up? Why, why? And, ro and why? drone. Exactly. Yes, yes. very much. Yes. The Egypt presented during this summit and um, the third annual report of the navigational project to set up Victoria Lake Alexandria. Yes. maritime passage and that should be complete uh, by 2024 the importance of such a navigational route and how do you view the prospects of opening more economic integration between the continents uh, actually uh, we have a challenge we have a challenge in the african continent which uh, as an obstacle for uh, following the trading between the african countries infrastructure that one or one third of the African countries are landlocked countries, mm. which they don't have ports on the oceans or the sea. That's why you found the uh, trading exchange between African countries and the uh, other four continent. It is less than uh, one fifth. It's supposed to be 20 percent because it is one of five uh, continents. But uh, we, uh, we used to have it captured under 9%, uh, mm. okay? Even between the African countries and each other, it used to be under 3% only. Uh, after the new van of the uh, Suez Canal, it became uh, boosted from 9% up to 14%. And that's what the, the uh, African president announced in Kigali uh, summit. Uh, mm -hmm. last year, 2016. Uh, uh, President El Sisi uh, helping the African countries to overcome that uh, 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 obstacle by uh, achieving the uh, African father's dream to have a road between uh, the north to the south, which used to be called Cairo Cape Road, and that road, he boasted it to become Alex Cape. So he finished like uh, the Egyptian government have been done 5,000 kilometer from the northern coast, coast either from Dometa or from Alexandria mm. up to uh, coastal and uh, our queen uh, corridor. And from that corridor, you can go on up to Cape Town. And it has been done from two young men. They, they traveled from Port Said up to Cape Town by car. Okay, uh, second thing, he also would like to help the uh, captured countries like Uganda and Ethiopia to boost the navigation trail through the Nile mm. River mm -hmm. uh, from Tana Lake and from Victoria Lake up to uh, Alexandria boat. Yes, I guess that is an important project that we look forward for. It's yeah. unfortunately my time is up, but before I just go, I have to say that. Um, Africa has always been seeing Egypt as the savior. Yeah. I guess it's not who is the savior, but rather we can save each other if we exactly. can really realize the exactly. importance and of the each other. And the meeting between the two president, President uh, Dessaline Haile Mariam and the President Sisi today reflected that. 
and he promised yes. he's coming yes. soon to Egypt to mm -hmm. assure for everybody yes. that we have a honeymoon with Egypt. Exactly. Yes, definitely. That's our hope and aspiration. Dr. Mohammed Abdel Ghaffar, Chairman of the African Economic Council, and Dr. Ibrahim Al Ghazali, Professor of International Law and Political Analysis. We thank you both, gentlemen, for being with us and for thank your you. input. Thank you so much. Thank you. Dave Yours, many thanks for watching. Tomorrow would be another uh, debate with another colleague. Good night.